so here we have this 17.1 sample drawing now in order to go to the publish dialog box select this application button and go to this print option and select batch plot now here we have this published dialog box and here we have 17.1 sample model 17.1 layout and layout 2 also we need to plot it in pdf output so i'll select this pdf option from the publish to option now here we need to ensure that model space is plotted with our setup page setup so here in the page setup drop down select this our setup and for rest of these i'll not change anything now with all of these default values simply click on publish specify location which is desktop obviously and select select no we don't want to save this list and wait for a couple of minutes now this publishing job will progress in the background so i'll close it and here you can see the animated publish icon okay so here we have it the final drawing is now published although we have some errors and warnings in the drawing so you can see the final report we have these warnings here you can check them you can correct these warnings but for now i'll simply ignore it simply close it and now select the drawing so here we have 17.1 sample drawing and here it is so this is the model layout the layout one and layout two all published in a single pdf file in this video i will tell you about the annotative property of autocad objects so up to this point you must have seen that there are lots of autocad objects or lot of autocad entities that use annotative property for example we have text that can be used with annotative property we have hatches dimensions and other objects like blocks which can be used with the annotative feature to understand this annotative feature i will explain it first with a very simple example now here in this drawing the second one we have these two simple rectangles and we have two simple hatches here in both of these cases the hatch has been made with a one is to one scale now as you can see here we have one is to one scale applied on the current drawing area and they are equally spaced hatches now when i move my cursor to this white hatch it's behaving in a normal way on the tooltip you won't see any new icon but when i move my cursor to this hatch pattern a new icon is visible which represents annotative property so right now the green hatch has annotative property whereas the white hatch has normal properties here we have multiple icons of annotative property and that indicates we have multiple scales added to this annotative object now I'll make this clear using the layout view of this drawing. So currently we have it in one is to one scale. Let's move to the layout. Now, when I move to the layout here, I've got three different viewports. In the first case, we have the first viewport here with a scale of one is to one. As you can see here, it has been represented with the help of field. So this viewport has a scale of one is to one. When I double click inside, you'll be able to see here that the scale is one is to one. Now in this scale, look at the hatch pattern. Now the spacing of hatches is equal in both of these cases. Now look at this hatch pattern. In this case, the scale is one is to two. Now in this case, as I am decreasing the scale, the gap of this normal hatch has also decreased. It has reduced to half of its original gap as it was in this one is to one scale. So obviously this will follow properly here. The scale of this viewport will reduce the scale of hatch pattern in normal hatch but look at the annotative hatch in this case the gap of this hatch pattern is still maintained and when you compare it with the original hatch pattern of one is to one the same gap is maintained although in this case the number of hatch lines are reduced in order to accommodate the same hatch gap now if you look at the third case here here the scale is one is to four so obviously in this case when you look at the normal hatch pattern the scale has been reduced to four times of its original value and the gap has also been reduced to four times of its original value but in this case again the same scale has been maintained as it was in the case of one is to one hatch pattern so that's the annotative property when you apply annotative property to an object you can keep consistent size throughout different scales now i'll explain it using another example 
in this case we have the simple drawing and right now this is the floor plan and as you can see that we have this floor plan so the size of this object is quite large it's in the scale of 30 to 35 feet along the length and 25 to 30 feet along the width now this scale is the actual scale of the drawing and obviously when you plot this drawing on a sheet of paper you need to reduce this scale because obviously we cannot make a sheet of paper of a length in the scale of 30 or 40 feet so that's obviously not practical so in order to do that what we do actually is we create layouts as we did here and the size of this layout is a3 so we create layouts with a standard paper size now in this case a3 and then we reduce the scale of original object now when the scale is reduced all the objects fit properly and also the annotations can be added directly now in this case here you can clearly see that the scale has been reduced to 1 is to 50 that means that when this drawing which is on the paper is increased to 50 times it will be equal to the size of actual object now in this case also when you look at the dimensions you will notice that they have a very particular size here and this size has been chosen depending upon the size of paper right now i have selected one fourth of an inch as the size of this dimension and that's a size which is quite visible on this kind of sheet of paper now in this case when you go to the model space you'll see that the same dimension size has been applied which is one fourth of an inch but it is obviously not visible because we need to zoom to this dimension in order to see this so that's the scale one by fourth of an inch that's the size here and obviously this is not visible in this case but even after reducing the scale we are able to properly see this dimension because the annotative property has been applied to this to make it even more clear i will show you this another example now in this case the scale has been increased to 1 is to 20 and further to 1 is to 10 now we have three different scales in this case the scale was 1 is to 50 in this case 1 is to 20 and 1 is to 10 now obviously with the change of scale the scale of this drawing changed in this case we are zooming into this kids bedroom and as we zoomed into this area all of these text blocks and the remaining objects increase in size but when you look at the dimension their size still remained constant in this case when you go to this drawing you'll see this is the size which is maintained for this scale and here also when we zoomed it even further the scale is still maintained that's only because the dimensions are annotative so whenever you apply annotative property to any of the objects it will always remain consistent in size throughout the different scales so now you are familiar with the annotative property of autocad objects so let's start by adding our own annotative object so in this case we have these dimensions and they are indicated with this green color but right now they are simple dimensions they are not annotative so in order to make our own annotative dimension i'll first turn off the layer which contains these dimensions so that's dim layer so i'll click on this light bulb icon and they'll be turned off now let's go to layer properties and create a new layer so i'll name it as anno dim the dimensions for annotative object now let's click on this color and change this color to this one just to recognize these dimensions clearly okay now we are prepared so i'll change the active layer to anno dim and now we can make our dimensions but before making the dimensions we need to create the dimension style and to do that i'll go to this annotation panel select the fly out here and select manage dimension styles so right now we have the standard dimension style which was selected for making the dimensions now i'll click on new and let's give it a name so i'll name it as anno short for annotative and here we have this annotative checkbox so make sure this checkbox is selected to create annotative dimension style now click on continue 
and we have lots of values to fill here. In this case, I'll start with line and here the baseline spacing is set to 1 by 64th of an inch. I'm not going to change this and rest of the options also i'll just leave it at the default i'll go to symbols and arrow and change the arrow size now this is the actual size which you'll see on the sheet of paper so if you are plotting on an a3 sheet of paper then you need to decide beforehand the size of your text arrows dimensions and other annotative object and this is the size which will always remain constant throughout different scales and throughout different viewports so that's the paper height of these objects. So for this case, I'll select one fourth of an inch as the size of arrow. Now I'll go to text and here also I'll make sure that the text height is set to one fourth of an inch, which it is. But if you don't find this text height as one fourth of an inch or whatever the value you want, then you can click on this box and change the text height from here in the text style. Once it is done, you can click on apply and cancel. Now we have these values set. Let's go to fit tab. And here also you'll notice that this annotative checkbox will be selected. And obviously with the annotative checkbox selected, rest of the options will be inactive. You won't be able to change the scale. Here I'll go to primary unit and you can change the precision, which I'll leave at one by fourth of an inch. So these are the simple settings that you need to make. Now with these settings, click on OK and click on close. So now our annotative dimension style is prepared. Let's click on this panel and here you'll see this NO dimension style active. And also you'll see this annotative symbol right beside the dimension, which is annotative. In case of standard, we don't have that symbol. Okay, so we have this dimension style active. Let's start by adding the dimension. So I'll go to this linear, click at this point and click on this point And there we have it, the first dimension. For the sake of simplicity, I'll click on this line weight display to turn it off. Now I'll go to this again and I'll add second dimension. And in a similar way, I'll add other dimensions. I've added the required number of dimensions in this drawing. So right now, as you can see that I've added these dimensions at the scale of one is to one. Here we have it. The one is to one scale has been set while applying the dimension style. Now I'll go to the layout tab. And here in the layout tab, I'll create the first layout. So I'll go to layout, click on rectangular, click at a point and then make the layout. So there we have it. Now in this case, let's make the first layout with a scale of one is to 50. So let's double click inside. I'll click on this scale and add one is to 50. Well, there we have it. Now, when I change this scale, the dimensions simply disappeared. That's because one is to 50 scale was not added to the annotative property. Now this might be a little bit confusing to you, but I'll make this clear in a moment. Now let's go back to the model space. And when I move my cursor over any of these dimensions, you'll see this single icon of annotative property that indicates that current dimension style has a single scale applied to it and that scale is one is to one and it simply means that this property will work only in the scale of one is to one in order to make this annotative property work in different scales you need to add them and in order to add them you can use this status bar option so the first option should always be active show annotation objects that will make annotation objects visible and in order to add scales click on this second option so that will help in adding different scales now you have already made this drawing at 1 is to 50 scale so we need it so for that i'll go to model i'll click on scale after turning on both of these options and now i'll click on 1 is to 50 and there we have it now the scale has been added and you'll see a change in size here also, you'll see this double icon of annotative object that indicates multiple annotative scales are now added. Now let's move back to the layout. There we have it. We have proper dimension size here and they are quite visible now. So this size is with respect to the paper. Now I'll go to layout two. Here also we have a three sheet of paper. Let's create two new viewports. So I'll go to rectangular and here I'll create the first viewport. Let's double click inside and add in scale of one is to 20 here. Well, there we have it. Let's zoom into this area, the kids bedroom. 
there we have it now double click outside and again we don't have the dimensions visible because we need to add this scale also the scale of 1 is to 20 but before adding that i'll create one more viewport so here we have the second viewport double click here zoom into this area and right now i'll change the scale to 1 is to 10 because we want this area in focus there we have it now we need to add two more scales one is to 10 and one is to 20 so again we'll move to model space click on this scale and change it to one is to 10 and the scale has been added also we need one is to 20 so let's add one is to 20 so that scale is also added now move back to layout 2 there we have it the dimensions are clearly visible and when you look at these dimensions you will find that their size is completely consistent here we have 1 is to 20 scale and look at the size of dimension and look at the size of dimension in this case in 1 is to 10 scale in both of these cases the size of dimension is equal even when you move to layout 1 where the scale was 1 is to 50 the same dimension size is maintained that's because we have applied annotative property now in most of these cases the dimensions are overlapping or they are not clearly visible for example in this case we don't have these dimensions visible they are overlapping each other which we don't want but in this case they are quite clearly visible so you can change their position in different viewports separately and they will not affect each other because they are annotative object obviously so i'll double click inside this first viewport of 1 is to 20 scale click on this dimension and click on this grip first let's double click outside now i'll click on this viewport select it click on this grip and move it a little bit over here well let's move it a little bit more and press escape now double click outside now you'll notice that this dimension did move but here in this case this dimension remained unaffected also i'll double click here i'll click on this dimension and i'll move it over here again we have 1 is to 10 scale the scale has not been changed there we have it now it's quite clearly visible in order to see these two scales i'll click here and i'll move it a little bit like this so that these two scales or these two dimensions are properly visible so here also when you go to layout one we can see that a consistent size is maintained and here also you can change these dimensions separately so i'll place it here press escape and there we have it it's now quite clearly visible so you can separately move this dimension also somewhere over here so that it's visible with respect to all of these objects so in this way you can create annotative dimensions although it might be a little bit confusing to you in the beginning but with practice you'll get really good at this and in a similar way you can create other kind of annotative objects for example if you want to create annotative text then you need to go to the text style and create a new text style but make sure that when creating the text style this annotative checkbox is selected and then you can select the height of text and that height will be kept in all of the different scales similarly you can create annotative blocks hatches and other objects in autocad in this video i will tell you about the design center tool of autocad so design center is a single utility which can be used to access named components within a drawing for example using design center you can extract layers blocks line types and other information from a drawing without directly importing the complete drawing now to explain this i'll use this drawing in this drawing we have the simple floor plan but we have some drawing components missing here we don't have the bed and other details which we have seen in the previous lesson now in order to import that we can use our own block or we can use ready-made blocks which are available in other drawings and also there is a third option which is design center so design center has some blocks made for you and you can use the blocks from that sample drawings so to start the design center palette press ctrl and two key on the keyboard and this will open the design center alternatively you can also use its command equivalent add center for opening this design center palette now once this palette is open you'll see this list 
in the folder list on the left and also the preview of the drawing or the files will be present here now in your case it may be different because it will always show the last setting of your design center which in my case was this setting now in order to return to the default condition click on this home icon so that will take your design center palette to its default condition now we need to insert the blocks so we'll look for those blocks in this ENUS folder so let's double click on this and let's go to this design center now we are again back to these drawings so let's select the drawing which is required so we need house designer so let's select this house designer and click on blocks now we have lots of blocks which are related to this house designer project but obviously we don't want these blocks so I'll move back a little bit and now I'll select this home or space planner now once again I'll click on blocks and now we have the drawings here or the blocks so we need to insert this bed queen or this block so you can simply select it then right click and select this insert block option now select OK and click at a point to insert this alternatively you can also drag and drop it within your drawing area so now in this case we have this block let's erase one of the instances and let's hide this now we can insert this block anywhere in the drawing area wherever we want so I'll just place it over here now you can change the size of this block you can rotate it and you can place it to different locations and once this block is inserted it will be available now in this insert window as well so here we have it it's now available here in a similar way you can add more drawings from this design center and you can use these blocks in your projects you can not only use these drawings from the design center drawing but you can also import them directly from your own drawing for example i will use my own drawing and i will import one of the dynamic blocks from the drawings which we have made previously and for that i'll click on this open now you need to locate the drawing from which you want to import the blocks or other named objects so here we have this 17.3 test drawing which we'll select and it's located on the desktop as you can see here let's click on open now this will show the list of all the components which are present in this drawing so we have blocks detail view dimension style layer layout and lots of other things so we are interested in blocks so I'll simply double click on blocks and here are the blocks which are present in this drawing so we are interested in this road sign so let's click on it and drag it and drop it so there we have it now obviously the size of this will be very small that's because the scale of this block is different from the scale of this drawing now let's hide this once again and I'll simply select this complete block I'll click on scale click at a point and let's add a scale of 10 and press enter now there we have it now it's quite visible we can even increase its scale to a larger value so I'll now change it to 3 and there we have it now it's quite visible so we have this dynamic block here and you can change its property so you can see that we have directly inserted it using the design center so you can not only insert the blocks you can also insert other objects for example we have a test layer also in the same drawing so I'll expand it once again and I'll move back a little bit and let's go to the bottom of this list so we have the 17.3 test dwg drawing we have already selected the blocks now we need layers so select layers and here are the three layers which are present in this drawing so we have zero and def points these are the default layers and we have this test layer which is not present in this list the list of current drawing now we'll insert it so i'll simply drag and drop it here and let's go to the list and now you'll see this test layer now when you go to layer properties manager you'll also notice that this test layer will have all the properties for example the color the line type and all the remaining properties which are applied on the original layer so let's now close it and let's look at the third feature which is related to the design center so using design center you can locate any block or any named object within a drawing even when you don't know the location of that exact drawing so let's assume that we need to find out a block 
with name U-turn. We only know that there is a drawing somewhere on the desktop on which we have that block. Now in order to locate it, simply go to this search icon and now define the parameters. So here in the look for value, select the block because we are looking for a block. Now in the location, specify the location. So you need to ensure that the location is as narrowed as possible. So if you narrow it down, it will take less time for the search operation. But if you keep a broad search area, that will take considerable amount of time. So in this case, I am selecting desktop because we know it's on desktop. Now click on OK and also make sure the search subfolders is selected. Now select the name, which is U-turn and now click on search now. And there we have it. So we have two drawings which contain these blocks. So we have it here on the test drawing 17.3 test and also on 17.3, which is the current drawing. So when you go to this drop down and let's just scroll down to this list, you'll see that we really have this U-turn block here. So in that way, you can find out any named objects even without knowing its exact location. And that's the beauty of Design Center. In this video, I will tell you about using tool palettes in AutoCAD. So using tool palettes, you can create and save your own set of AutoCAD blocks. And whenever required, you can use those blocks from the tool palette. Using tool palettes, you can not only access your own custom blocks, but also there are lots of ready-made blocks which are available on the tool palettes that you can use. So in order to access the tool palette, simply press Ctrl three on the keyboard and there we have it we have the tool palette also you can use the view panel and from this view panel you can click on this tool palettes option and the tool palette will be visible now in this case on this tool palette we have lots of different tabs for example the modeling on which we have solid modeling related tools the constraints annotation which contains lots of different callouts and annotations and here we have the blocks so these are the dynamic blocks which are related to architectural drawing some mechanical drawings and lots of different blocks which you can use also we have the hatches and there is a whole list of different objects so when you click on the bottom you'll see lots of different other tabs also here so you can select from any of them so for now we have these blocks. Now, in order to insert any of these blocks directly in your drawing area, you can simply drag and drop it here. For example, in this case, we have it here. Now, in order to add your own custom block, you need to first make it. So I'll just erase it and I'll go to home tab. And now I'll make our own block. So I'll go to rectangle and make a rectangle Then go to circle and make a circle somewhere over here. Now we'll convert it into a simple block. For that, I'll move this palette a little bit over here and now click on this create block and give this block a name. So let's name it as test block. Now select the pick point, which will be this point and select the objects. So I'll select all of them and press enter. Now make sure allow exploding is checked and also make sure open in block editor is unchecked and click on OK. So there we have it. We have this block here, as you can see in this list also. So that's the block which we have inserted. And this is the block, the test block, which we have made. Now, in order to save it on the tool palette, we need to first save this complete drawing. And you need to ensure that this drawing is saved at a location from where the drawing is not deleted. Because once you delete this drawing, you lose access to all the saved blocks on the tool palette. So I'll save it on the desktop for now. So click on save, select the desktop and give it a name. So once again, I'll name it as test block and click on save. Generally, I recommend saving this drawing somewhere within the design center directory. So here we have this design center. Now I'll go to home icon 
simply click on e in us and design center now you can save this drawing over here also and in that case it will be accessible not only from the tool palette but also from the design center easily because you will remember the location and to save it over here you can simply go to save option or save as option and you can follow the path which is here c program files so i'll just go to c then program files then autodesk autocad 2018 and then sample enus and design center and there we have it all the sample drawings and here you can save this drawing and in this way you can ensure that the drawing is not accidentally deleted so i'll simply press cancel here and i'll close the design center now we'll create our new tool palette and for that click anywhere on this tool palette and then select this new palette option and there we have it the new palette let's now name it as source cad and press enter now here we have it it's completely empty now in order to add the block you can simply drag and drop it so select it then drag it and drop it and the test block is now added now you can insert this block directly from the palette and this palette will be accessible from new drawings as well so even when you click on a completely new drawing and here also you'll notice that this tool palette is accessible and you can insert your block here also so let's move back to this test block drawing now there are a couple of different things that you can do with this tool palette also so here in this case let's say that we want to modify this block so in order to do that, you can simply select the block, right click and select block editor. So that will directly open the block editor and you can modify this drawing. So here I'll add one more circle. Now I'll click on close block editor and save the changes. So the block is now modified. Now if you insert it again, it will insert the new redefined version of the block now if you want to restore the previous version you can simply right click on this and select redefine and that will restore the original version of this block you can also add your own custom images for these blocks so here in this case it will take the default preview of the block but if you want to add your own image then simply right click and select specify image now we have to specify two different images one for the light theme and one for the dark theme so i'll click on browse and i'll go to desktop and here we have it so i have this logo the source card logo and i'll select it for the light theme then i'll browse it and go to desktop and select this logo for the dark theme and there we have it the previews now click on ok and you'll see that the preview will change here also now if you want to get rid of this custom tool palette right click on it and simply select delete palette and click on ok now we don't have that palette anymore in the drawing so this was all about creating our own tool palette and adding our custom blocks to that in this video i will tell you about using the quick select tool of autocad so right now we have all of these drawings here and they are simply the circles of different radii so in this case the smallest circle is of radius 0.3 unit and the largest has a radius of 1.8 unit now also these circles are placed on different layers so when you go to this layer drop down you'll see that we have these three layers apart from the layer zero and the color of that layer has been assigned as per its name so the cyan layer has cyan color green has green color and red has red color and the objects are also placed on their appropriate layers now let's say that we want to make a selection of all the objects on red layer now for that you can obviously do a manual selection but that will take time and it can also lead to some errors if you have a very complex drawing in this case we have a fairly small drawing so you can make the selection manually as well but for large drawings this becomes a really hectic and error prone task and for that you can use quick select tool so i'll start the quick select tool from the utilities panel so go to this panel select this quick select and this quick select window will start you can use its command equivalent q select as well so once the command is active select the parameters so in this case we want to select all of the objects on red layer so for that i'll first select 
the entire drawing because we want to make the selection from this complete drawing. Now, obviously, we only have the circle here. So here in this drop down, you'll only see circles. But if you have lots of different objects, those objects will be visible in the drop down and you can select the type of object which you want to include in your selection set. Now we want to make the selection as per layer. So I'll select layer in the properties and now I'll select the operator. So obviously in this case, equal operator should be selected because we want to make a selection of red layer. And here in the value, select red. So in value, you'll see all the layers which are present in the drawing. So select red. And now here, how to apply option will be visible. And in this case, select this radio button, include in new selection set. Also make sure append to current selection set is unchecked. Click on OK. And there we have it. All the objects on red layer are now selected. Now let's do this again, but with a slightly different properties. So I'll go to quick select. And in this case, I'll select entire drawing circle layer. And we don't want to select the objects on red layer, but we want to select all the objects which are not on red layer. For that, you can simply select not equal operator. And now simply click on OK. And there we have it. So all of the objects except the object of layer red are selected. There is also a different method of making this kind of selection. So I'll go to utilities again, click on this quick select. And in this case, I'll select layer again, I'll select equal, I'll select red, but in this case, I'll select exclude from selection set. So everything which should be included in the selection set, that means all the objects of this red layer will be excluded and the remaining objects will be selected. So let's click on OK. And there we have it. We still have the same selection set, which we obtained with the previous conditions. Now let's make the selection on a different criteria. Now let's say that we want to make a selection of all of the circles in this drawing, which has radius greater than one unit. For that, I'll once again go to this quick select. And now I'll select entire drawing circle. And now we are making the selection based on the radius. So I'll scroll down in this list and select radius. Now we need to ensure that the radius should be greater than one. So go to this drop down and select greater than and in the value type one. Now obviously here you need to select include in the new selection set and click on OK. And there we have it. So all of the circles with radius greater than one unit are selected and you can clearly see that they are on variety of different layers. Now let's say that we have already made a selection set here and it's quite a random selection set with small and large circles. And now we want to add more objects in this selection set. So you can do that as well. So I'll once again go to utilities, quick select. And in this case, I'll make a selection set of all of the circles with radius less than 0.9 unit. So I'll once again go to radius. And I'll select less than and I'll select 0.9. Now in this case, we have this option append to current selection. So make sure this is checked. So when you keep this option checked, all of these objects which are already selected and they are obviously not fulfilling these criteria, they will also remain in the selection set that will fulfill this criteria. And once you have checked this, make sure that all of these settings are unchanged. They are still the same and then click on OK. So there we have it. We have new objects in this selection set. So all of these objects are still selected, but new objects which fulfill the criteria are also added. So in this way, you can make clever selections from your AutoCAD drawing and this can reduce errors and make a selection faster in AutoCAD. In this video, I will tell you about the Express tools of AutoCAD. So Express tools are simply the tools which are not yet fully accepted into the AutoCAD program. And you can see that these are standby tools which may or may not be added in the future versions of AutoCAD, depending upon their usability and requirement. So you can find all of the Express tools on this Express tools tab. So when you go to this tab, you'll see lots of Express tools and there are quite helpful tools present on this Express tools tab.
So now let's have a look at some of these express tools and I'll start with the arc aligned text. Now let's say that you want to write a text which is aligned along an arc and for that you can simply use this arc aligned text. But before that we need to have the arc. So I'll go to home, click on arc and now let's make it. So here is the arc. Now I'll go to express tools, select this arc aligned, now click on the arc. And now you can write the text. So let's type AutoCAD 2018 complete course and there we have it. So we have the text. Now you can change some of these settings. For example, the text style, the font and its layer assignment. So here the red is selected. You can keep it at by layer option, which will be selected by default or you can change it from this list. So let's change it to green in this case. Now here we have the text height which also you can change the offset value and the width factor and many other different values. So I'll keep these settings and click on OK. And there we have it. So right now the text is really very small and we need to change some of these parameters. For that you can simply double click on it. Now from this property panel you can once again modify its properties. For example here we have the height. Let's change this height value. 0.8 and press enter. Now it's quite visible but we can change it even further so I'll change it to 1.2 and press enter. Now it's looking good. So we have the width factor here. Let's change this value to 1.2 and that looks good. So I'll close it and I'll press escape key and there we have it. Now this text is completely related with this arc and if you change the dimensions of this arc, the text will change. For example, in this case, I'm reducing its length and the text will fit automatically according to the length of arc. So let's now erase it. Now there is also another tool which is burst and this tool can be used as a replacement of explode tool. So to explain this, I'll select a new block which I've already made in this drawing. So I'll click on insert and I'll import this block. Now as you can see that this is an attributed block which has attributes. So I'll type room number here. So let's type 24 as the room number and the name as Alex and click on OK. So there we have it. We have the occupant name and 24 as the room number in this room tag attributed block. Now I'll make one more copy of this. So I'll go to copy, select it, press enter and make a copy. Now we have these two blocks. Now in first case, let's select it and let's explode it. So I'll type X and press enter. And there we have it. Now the block is obviously exploded and it is reduced to its original components. In this case, we have the polyline, the line, and also these attribute values. So you can see here on the flyout, we have attribute definition here also. This is an attribute. Now, what if we want to keep the original attribute values, which are these two values, the Alex and 24 room number. Now for that, you can use burst express tool. So I'll go to express tool. And instead of exploding it, I'll select explode attributes, which has a command equivalent burst. So select it, select the block and press enter. There we have it. Now, once again, this is exploded. We have the polyline and line. Also, we have it as text, but now the original attribute text value is retained. In a similar way, we have another useful express tool here in AutoCAD and in order to use it, I need to unhide an object. So I'll go to this end object isolation and I'll click on end object isolation. Now here I have got these two texts which I've already made in this drawing and I have isolated this text. Now here in this case, we have this as M text. So when you double click on this, you'll see that this text editor will open up because it's an M text. Now I'll close it. Now if I double click on this text, the text editor will not open. That simply indicates that it's a single line text unit. Now, if you want to convert this single line text into M text, you can use this convert to M text express tool and its command equivalent is txt to mtxt as you can see on the flyout also. So now I'll click on this convert to M, M text, select this single line text value and press enter. 
and here we have it it's now converted into m text now if you double click on this you'll see that this text editor will be visible and you can modify it just like any m text element so i'll click outside and there we have it so these are the three express tools which are quite frequently used i invite you to explore the remaining express tools on this express tools tab In this video, I will tell you about troubleshooting some of the common errors in AutoCAD drawings and in the AutoCAD software. But first I will start with cutting the size of AutoCAD file. So whenever you are working with a drawing, gradually it becomes larger in file size, not only because of the data which is added in it, but also because of some redundant and useless data that generally increases the file size and it makes them bulky and full of errors. So there are a couple of ways which you can use to reduce the file size and remove the errors from your drawing. So one of the most basic tool is purge. So using this purge command you can remove everything which is not used in your drawing and i would recommend you to use purge only when your drawing is complete or it is set for submission so in order to use the purge tool type purge on the command line and press enter now this purge window will pop up and here you'll see lots of objects in this list so these are the objects that you can purge and in front of the objects which are unused you'll see this plus icon so in this case we have some additional layers which can be purged and if there are some additional blocks in your drawing you'll see a plus icon in front of that and in most of the cases there are many redundant and useless blocks which are automatically formed and that you'll see in this list there are also lots of other objects in this list that you can purge now once you have found those objects you can selectively purge them for example let's say that you only want to purge blocks so for that you can select the block and simply click on purge button in this case we don't have any additional blocks, so this purge button is inactive but now we have the layers so when you select layers this purge button will become active and you can simply click on purge and all the extra layers or unused layers will be purged now if you have lots of objects in this list and if you want to purge all of them automatically then you can use this purge all and that will purge all of these objects from your drawing in many cases you may need to click on this purge all button a couple of times in order to clean this view completely and you can keep on clicking this purge all button as long as it is not grayed out there is also an option of automatically purging this often data so these often datas are generally the dgn line types and other objects that generally are not visible in the drawing but they make your drawing files very bulky so whenever purging these objects i would simply recommend that you keep this checkbox selected in that way you can purge good amount of data cleaning your drawing and making it error free so i'll just select this and simply i'll click on purge all it will prompt for this message select purge all items and there we have it the button is now grayed out and everything has been purged including the often data now let's close it so that was the purge tool there is also another tool called overkill which you can use to remove some overlapping objects so you can see the overkill tool on this modify panel so when you expand it here we have this overkill tool obviously you can use its command equivalent overkill so select it now select the complete set of objects from which you want to remove redundant data press enter simply click on ok and here you will see two overlapping objects or segments were deleted so obviously we got success here in cleaning a little bit more of this drawing okay so that's the most basic step in cleaning your drawing now you can move to the third step and here you can check your drawing for errors now whenever your drawing starts to show some errors you can check them using the audit tool so simply type audit and press enter now this will show this message on the command line fix any errors detected so obviously we do want to fix the errors so simply click on yes and there we have it 
it ran a script in the background and here we have total errors found five and all of those errors are now fixed so our errors are also gone so now this drawing is far better than the drawing with which we started and now you can save this drawing in many cases you'll find that a drawing file is corrupt to such an extent that you won't be even able to open that file so for those cases you can use recover command so simply type recover and press enter now this will open this file dialog box from here select the drawing which you are generally not able to open and you can select any of these drawings let's say that we want to recover this 17.3 drawing so i'll select it i'll click on open and now here the drawing has been recovered and you'll also see the number of errors here so in this case two errors were found and both of them were fixed so simply click on close and the drawing will open in a new window after fixing the errors so these were different methods of cleaning your drawing or fixing the errors in the drawing but what if the error is related to the software itself in those cases you can try different options depending upon the error which you find for example if you have some missing toolbar icons you can go to this view tab and turn on that respective file icon for example here we have the file tab let's say that file tabs are missing just like this you can simply click on file tab here or the if layout tabs are missing you can bring them back you can toggle their visibility and lots of other things but if you are not able to figure out the problem or if you are not able to find out the exact reason then you can try a reset but resetting the autocad will remove any custom settings that you have applied so obviously you can make a backup of custom settings and you can reset or you can simply reset your software and make those settings once again so in order to make a reset you need to first close all of the open windows so i'll close this autocad window window.